This is me. This is my beloved wife, Sylvia. This is Sylvia's idea of sailing. This is my dream of sailing and my hope of circumnavigating the globe as a retirement project in 2029. This is Sylvia's reaction to that idea. I am on a six-year quest to convince Sylvia that a circumnavigation is a wonderful adventure, but the clock is ticking, so join me as I search for the perfect yacht that Sylvia will love and get all your ladies to subscribe and cheer Sylvia on in the comments. Welcome back to Naval Gazing at Camp David and the fifth in our series on the Dave Top 19 list of yachts that I just might purchase. We're looking at the top three today. Many of you have asked if after touring so many yachts, I've settled on anything that would make Sylvia happy yet. My perception of what might be the right yacht for us certainly has vacillated over the last three years as what I have learned from you, the audience, manufacturers, sailing courses, knowledgeable boat brokers, and my own research has molded my understanding of what is really needed for both Sylvia and I to be comfortable, safe, and happy living long-term on the water. I believe that the fog is beginning to clear and I am settling down to refining a final list. Although, as you will soon see, I still have a way to go. Here are the general parameters. As with many of us, price must be the first filter. In my case, with a few rare exceptions, this means that I will be looking at pre-owned yachts. My current target is no more than a million, including refit and outfitting. For a refit budget, I'm looking at 250,000 for boats more than 10 years old, 150,000 for five to 10 years, and 50,000 for two to five years. For a depreciation budget, I'm estimating 10% per year for the first three years and 5% per year for the next seven years with little change after 10 years old. Bearing that in mind, any of the prices that you see on, on the top line of these lists reflects the fact that I'd be purchasing this five to seven years from now. My preference is for a catamaran and I will favor dagger boards for better upwind performance and a KSP of 70 or better. Pure Vinyl Ester over Foam Core is my desired hull construction and a shaft drive would win the day on propulsion. I would prefer not to have a flybridge helm, meaning rather to a mid bulkhead or outboard aft helms with twin helms a strong plus factor. Regardless, there must be a clear, unobstructed view of the sails with or without adjustment of the great wheel from that helm, i.e. the uh, Versa helm. A heavy preference will be given to power, a power furling main and four sails and all winches must be power. Finally, two to three side access owner's berths are favored and the interior spaces must be elegant with an emphasis on natural wood veneers and as little exposed fiberglass as possible. With all this in mind, I've come up with the first draft of the Dave list and it consists of 19 yachts stretching from the early 2000s to a couple that have yet to be launched. If I won the lottery, there'd be several boats added, such as Privilege, Balance, Neil, Outremer, Explocat, and Kinetic. If the budget gets trimmed, I would be adding several earlier model monohulls, such as an Oyster 485, Moody 64, Contest 50, Juno 57, and the Beneteau 55 and 60. But for now, this is the top 19 on the Dave list. This week, we will be revealing the top three. If there's a points tie, the tiebreaker was the KSP number as a final nod to sailing performance. Stay tuned to the end to see the final scoreboard and how we scored them. The boats in no particular order are the Katana 582 from 2001 to 2005, the HH 44 OC from 2024, and the Balance 442 from 2023 or 2024. Looking at the profiles of these vessels, uh, they're all handsome boats. Uh, obviously the Katana, a little dated in its design, its porthole hulls and things of that nature, but still a good looking vessel. The, the HH44OC, uh, I would say is the most attractive of the group. Uh, you know, very sleek, but it is also quite, you know, smaller as you will see. The, the 442, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, is a very balanced boat. Uh, it, it really is uh, an attractive boat when you see it in person. It feels much larger than its 44 feet. 
heading on to the cabin tops. There's nothing going up here, going on up here on any of them, of course. These are far more performance-oriented vessels, uh, and I'm a little surprised that these are the top three. Uh, I, I didn't manipulate the numbers. I simply scored them blindly, and this is what ended up on top. Um, the HH44, of course, masses of solar up there, all flexible solar. I think it was over 4,000 kilowatts uh, that you can have on it. And, and it has those very unique uh, dropping aft swim platforms that I think is a great innovation. Uh, the, uh, I, th I believe they have some cushions for up front uh, to create a bit of a faux front cockpit. The uh, Balance 442, uh, gobs of real estate up on top here, and they put uh, ventilated glass panels up there as they, uh, the, those are the most efficient. And of course, they can put them on the, uh, the dinghy davits as well as, as all of these can. Um, the difference here, of course, is that your helm is a, uh, a mid uh, bulkhead mounted helm. Uh, the HH is uh, aft, well, semi-aft um, um, outboard helms. I love the, the helm position. It has the, um, the Versa helm that allows you to bring it full inside under the bimini, looking out through the windows or full outside, uh, looking down the side of the hulls with full view of the, um, of the sails. Love it. Uh, the, uh, and, and, and it's level, so you can run back and forth real easy. Uh, the balance has the elevated helm. It has its advantages in visibility. Um, it's a very comfortable helm seat, and then the Versa helm that drops down into a full uh, outfitted uh, uh, secondary helm that looks out and through the front windows with remarkable clarity and sense of control. Um, and then the Katana 5A2 old school, you've got uh, the hard top out the back with, with possibilities for solar. You could also do it on the, uh, the, the uh, cabin top there. Um, in, in front of that, and then you've got room for bean bags and stuff, lots of room out on the foredeck, uh, but there's nothing factory built there. Very comfortable uh, cockpit in the aft, and of course your davits and your, your dinghy out there. Heading down into the saloons, you can see the size of the Katana 582. <laughs> it dwarfs the other two, of course, 58 feet versus 44. Um, the aft cockpit, if you can see it here in this very bad drawing, is really uh, spacious and nice, but unique in that it is raised. You step down into the salon. Now, you would think, oh, I like straight through, except under the floor of that aft cockpit is masses of storage. So for a long-term sailor, it's awesome. As you head into, now, as you head in, now, the other thing is your helms are at very far aft and outboard. Twin helms, far aft and outboard, perfect view of your sails, uh, you know, real sense of connection with the ocean. Love that helm position. I can put some kind of a bimini over it to shelter it. I've seen other Katana owners of this ilk uh, do the same thing. It's not going to give you full uh, uh, isolation. But, you know, again, uh, monohull sailors have been dealing with this for years. And you can manage it with your uh, wireless remote um, uh autopilot as well as you walk around the boat. Moving in, this is where the magic happens. Off to your port um, uh, aft is a beautiful full U-shaped -sha galley, absolutely spectacular. Forward of that is a, an amazingly huge settee and dinette, uh, looks gorgeous. Uh, in this configuration to the starboard of that, you have the chart table and then aft starboard uh, sort of midships there, you've, you've got some kind of an entertainment center. Now this can be laid out a dozen different ways. It's this way, uh, the way that I prefer, which has um, the, instead of that entertainment center uh, uh, to the starboard, you have another seating area. Uh, I've seen uh, co uh, uh, club chairs, I've seen settees, you name it, it was very configurable. 
Um, going over then to the 442, the the um, cockpit is feels really big. It feels fantastic. You've got your built-in barbecue and your uh, forward-facing aft settee, as well as lots of seating areas. You've got a full redundant uh, helm position when the Versa helm comes down, where you actually have a seat and full instrumentation, and you're able to look straight forward with a, an amazing sense of control and connection. Uh, then as you walk in the door, of course, the doors open wide open. Um, you've got your a very lovely galley uh, on the aft wall. And then forward port, you've got a lovely settee. And uh, forward starboard, you have um, a either a uh, nav station or it can be turned into another storage area. Uh, really beautifully done. Uh, the 44OC, uh, again, you've got a, a lovely... Uh, cockpit area, very open. Uh, the aft forward-facing settee, unfortunately, is either that settee or it's it's your barbecue center. You can't have both, which is unfortunate. Uh, heading up into the um, um, saloon, uh, again, I have not been on the 44 yet, so I can't speak to the impression of space, but I would be surprised if it felt as big as the 442. Uh, having said that, it's a beautiful layout. Uh, beautiful um, U-shaped galley, which is very, very nice. you got a very large uh, nav station, uh, forward port, and your dinette and settee uh, forward starboard. Heading then into the accommodations. <laughs> this is, you know, you, you look at the Katana 582, and um, here you've got on the uh, aft starboard, you have their typical two-side access uh, owner's suite and, and berth, and a very uh, extensive um, shower and bathroom area. So owner's suite takes up two-thirds of the hull, and then there's a forward section that uh, is for guests or crew. And then on the, star on the port side, uh, you've got aft uh, the, the traditional uh, Katana uh, twin beds, um, that look very, very elegant, a separate head, and then forward a, uh, an area again for another guest suite. Uh, the 442, uh, beautifully executed. You've got the starboard side owner's hull with an athwart ship, three side access berth. You've got a, a door into the four peaks so Sylvia can have her walk-in closet. It's fantastic. And, and the, the, the aft bathroom actually comes into its own in the 442. It feels a little overpowering in the 526 and the 482, but in the 442, it feels just right, as Goldilocks would say. Um, and then over in the, um, uh, in the passenger side here, you've got uh, aft, um, a berth there, very fore aft berth, and then forward you've got another uh, a thwartship three side access berth. Very very nicely done. Uh, the forty four OC, um, you've got uh, the butt scoot bed in the uh, owner's uh, port side hull, um, and and I I do have to say that's the one thing that puts me off of the HH. I, I love their their vessels. Obviously they're finished to a T. They look so technically beautiful i mean you can't you can't argue anything there but that owner's birth feels like a coffin to me in real life and in all the pictures uh the the window is way you know two or three feet above where your head is along the side the sides are padded just like a coffin like it just it, there's no room between you and the wall the 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 the, the mattress goes right to the wall uh, it is pure butt scoot in the extreme degree even beyond uh outremer um, you know, they, they would do well by stylistically entering a secondary window about a foot down, allowing at least you to roll over and look straight out. Um, then the rest of it is, is gorgeous. I mean, the, the bathroom, the head, everything is, is beautifully finished. Um, over on the passenger side, again, you've got the, uh, the aft uh, butt scoot bed. And then forward, you've got uh, that smart room area, which can be the workshop. It can be any number of different things, or it can be a berth. If you're enjoying the content, please take a moment to hit the subscribe button. Then share the channel with a couple of friends and hit the like button. It's free and really helps the channel. 
You can also join our crew on Patreon, where you can enjoy ad-free viewing as well as downloads of the Excel specification and PowerPoint layout comparisons while helping the channel for a few bucks a month. I am in the process of uploading all of the previous videos and uh, basically cleaning up and standardizing their specification spreadsheets so they all look in the newest format. Uh, my hope is eventually then to take all of those and combine them into a single master that's sortable, but that's yet to come. You can find a link to the Naval Gazing at Camp David Patreon channel in the description below, where you can also click to receive our free ebook and information on some really cool virtual tra sailing training. And speaking of cool, my friends at catamaranshow.com have developed an amazing website and database of every catamaran available and scheduled to launch that allows you to do selectable in-depth comparisons of three cats at a time. They are also working on an incredible virtual tour and on-the-fly configurator that provides the option of fully immersive virtual reality 3D with the appropriate goggles. This is an incredible resource for anyone considering a new catamaran purchase. Have a look by clicking the link in the description below. Okay, looking at the numbers now. So again, we're not going to look at the prices because we've already talked about all our parameters around there as it relates to refit, uh, outfit, and base price, and age, and all that sort of stuff. Um, we, looking at length overall, of course, you've got the 582 at 62 feet. It's a big, big girl. The only concern I'd have here is, is actually managing that. But Keith seems to do it on his uh, on his big 585. And if, again, I know that there'll be gasps in the audience, but I would have bow thrusters and stern thrusters and uh, maybe not stern thrusters, but certainly bow thrusters and a, a dockmate, a wireless dockmate in my hand, and that would make my life a lot easier. Uh, then between the other two, uh, HH uh, says that they're 49.7. That's probably with the the hatch is down um, and uh, balance is uh, 44.29. At the water line, this tells the tale. The HH is 43.57 and the balance is 44.29. Uh, the Katana 57.5. The beam on these, um, so the Katana is uh, 29.75 feet. Uh, the um, balance is 24.93, so 25 feet. Uh, and the HH is 23.46, so 23 and a half feet. So you basically got another foot and a half of beam uh, on a vessel that's probably longer than the HH on the balance, which probably reflects that sense of space that you have on it. Uh, the draft um, on these and two of the uh, three have dagger boards. That's the 582 and the 442. The HHOC has many keels and possibly winglets. Uh, but the draft uh, boards up. Uh, the least draft is the balance at 3.81. Uh, then it's the katana at 4.5. And then it's the HH at 4.99 or 5 feet. Uh, looking at displacement, so uh, the lightest of the bunch is the HH at uh, 8.75 tons or 19,290 pounds. Next, of course, is the uh, balance at 11.8 tons uh, and 26,014 pounds. And then the big girl is the Katana at, you know, it's 62 foot boat. It's 24 tons or 52,910 pounds. Uh, upwind sail area. It's the uh, um, Katana at uh, 2,540 square feet. Holy mackerel. That's a lot of canvas. Then you've got the uh, balance, which is a surprisingly high 1783. And then the HH at 1349. Uh, down in engines, um, you've got, uh, you know, the balance and HH are basically the same. Uh, one's 29 and the other's 30, uh, twin 29, twin 30s. And the Katana is twin uh, 110. So that's going to scoot along okay. As uh, far as the actual uh, tankage and capacities go, of course, it's the Katana at 1,400 liters of fuel and 1,600 liters of water. Uh, with 300 liters of black. Uh, then it's the balance at 800 liters of fuel, 700 liters of water, and 84 liters of black. 
And finally, the HH at 550 liters of fuel, 400 liters of water, and 80 liters of black. Substantially lower in its tankage than the, uh, the balance. Okay, let's move into some of the more uh, technical information here. Uh, and this is where I salute Balance. They are the only company that provides all, all the data that fills this chart. Absolutely outstanding. Interior usable square footage, living space, 571 square feet. Exterior usable living space, 99 square feet. Interior enclosed storage volume, 485 cubic feet. Exterior locker volume, 628 cubic feet. And then as we get into the fridges, I really could only find them for the Balance and the Katana. Uh, so the Katana has 240 liters of fridge and 100 liters of freezer. Uh, and the Balance, as laid out, says 75 and 75. As far as the hulls go, getting down into it, uh, so <clears throat> it's going to be uh, the HH out in front with uh, epoxy infused e-glass sandwich construction. Um, there's a barrier outside with vinyl ester and, and um, extensive use of carbon fiber reinforcement. Then um, it, it's hard for me to say because I'm not an engineer, but just from the materials, I would say it's the Katana. E-glass and carbon fiber with uh, Kevlar reinforcements and pure vinyl ester over a uh, foam core. Then it would be the balance with e-glass, carbon fiber reinforcement, uh, and it's got polyester inner skin and a vinyl ester outer skin. So very much like uh, an Outremer. As far as uh, system voltages and batteries, obviously it was a little challenging to find it on the older Katana, but uh, the balance has 400 amp hours <clears throat> and the HH has 640 amp hours. And um, the, uh, the um, available solar, I, I, I wasn't able to quite capture it here. Uh, let me see if I can see it below my indicator. Uh, so yeah, uh, max factory solar on the balance, uh, 2200 watts. Uh, on the HH, 3,300 watts, although that's probably not including anything over the davits. Uh, the balance is ventilated glass, and the HH is flexible. Okay, let's get into the performance numbers, or the performance indicators at least. Sail area to displacement, or an indicator of power. It's the balance at 32.4, followed by the HH at 30 and the Katana at 28.8. Displacement to hull length at the waterline, or an indication of heaviness. This is lightest number wins. It is the HH at 104.1, followed by the Katana at 124.2, and the Balance at 133.7. Finally, uh, the, the KSP, uh, an indicator of uh, theoretical uh, uh, percentage of wind speed at 10 knots. The balance and the HH are tied at 87 and the katanas at 83. So that is uh, all the, the actual numbers in the whole thing. Now let's have a quick peek and see what did Sylvia say. Well, we're going to start with the HH 44 OC. 2024 would the, be the year that I could consider purchasing. Beautiful aft cockpit, real nice access uh, from the saloon. Uh, you can see these amazing front safari windows, I think is what they call them. Um, the, a little cramped, as, as Keith would say. It's not a big man boat. There's that uh, berth, and it, it just feels too coffinish for me. Um, the, the, the head, beautiful, warming, toweling racks, again, reminiscent of an oyster. Let's do a quick speed tour here. Um, looking around, you can see this is the one. Uh, it's got beautiful uh, side gates that open in, as somebody pointed out to me. So if you're up against a, a low tide pier, you can still get out. Uh, the aft areas there that drop down, this one has the aft forward-facing seat. You can see the great visibility you have on the sails with the VersaHelm uh, pushed full outboard. And uh, again, these beautiful uh, front windows are, are really quite spectacular. 
Um, looking around the uh, saloon, it's certainly not like the HHs of old, at least in this trim. There's a lot of exposed plastic here. It's very shiny, very modernistic, very space 1999, if you will. Um, but, you know, beautifully executed. Uh, the the um, indirect lighting is absolutely gorgeous. Every facet, every piece of hardware is high-end and looks and feels high-end. Um, you know, good visibility out these windows. They're not the largest windows, but good visibility. You can see um, that side window would be nice if it was down maybe at the top of that gray or even six inches below that. Uh, the aft window would be lovely if you were facing aft, but generally you're not. Uh, you can see this is definitely a single up in the uh, four peak here if you have it as a, a berth rather than as the work room, which I would, I would have it as a utility room for sure. And again, here's your guest berth, which uh, just to me it doesn't have the same openness as uh, say the, um, the balance does. Okay, looking, speaking of balance, here we are on a balance 442. There is that wonderful lower helm station fully equipped for you if you're uh, driving from here. And you can see the fabulous view out the front. Again, lots of room and, and warmth in the cockpit. There's that waterfall uh, countertop with the lovely touch of marble in it. Here is uh, the, one of the athwart ship forward bursts. You can see the uh, hatch into the four peak there. What a great open space. Here's the aft berth and, and again feels very open and airy. And here's the other side actually turned into a work area. Okay, let's do a quick speed tour. Here we are at the 442 in Annapolis recently, and uh, uh, you got nice big sugar scoops, great access on board, um, beautifully integrated uh, um, davits there. You can drop some nice solar on top of that. Um, everything very sleek. I, I never really noticed here before, but they have clear side decks just like Katana does. There's no hatches in those side decks. Look at the control of these lines. No spaghetti. Phil hates spaghetti. Uh, integrated handhold and water catchment. Beautiful uh, princess seats up at the bow uh, and a great four deck area. You could have beanbag chairs, your your little four uh, four forward uh, tent uh, covering there um, if you wanted to. They haven't gone with uh, recessed hatches, not quite sure why. I tell you, when you walk along this Langeron, you feel tough. It feels sturdy. I can't, everything about this vessel feels like a Mercedes. It, it feels just absolutely built. Uh, the, the real glass windows, um, there's your beautifully integrated real glass ventilated solar. Really do like it. Uh, and you know, you can choose multiple different, they've got a beautiful configurator on their website. You should have a look at that. You can configure your soft goods, colors, your, uh, faux teak floor colors, but you can see the space in this cockpit is tremendous, especially considering you have a completely redundant lower helm area that keeps you completely out of the wind and the rain if you're in bad conditions. And yet when you're in good conditions, you slide that upper uh, piece back, hop up here. You got all of your um, electric winch controls at your feet. You've got a little pop-up cover there that can go over your head if you want. Uh, all of your um, uh, uh, lines are well cared for and you've got great visibility, not to mention fantastic access to that um, to, to that boom and your, your sail there. It, it really is a, uh, a tremendous uh, vessel, the way it's thought out. It is absolutely the very definition of a balance in performance and comfort. Um, that beautiful uh, metal uh, grill there, uh, stopping water from getting into your salon, the, the, the windows that go all the way back. Look at the, they, they make these, uh, these plate holders and drip uh, holders there. They've incorporated some lovely um, uh, uh, veneer, wood veneers in here. Of course, you can select your Corian, which this lady did, and I think she did a fabulous job. You can select your veneers to warm the interior up here so it doesn't feel like you're living inside a shower stall. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a, a really comfortable, open, quality feeling space. All of the uh, integrated indirect lighting. Uh, in this one, they uh, chose not to go with a chart table there. They put storage underneath. Uh, you know what? Even though I'm not big on chart tables, I'd probably do the chart table. I don't know. 
Um, heading down, you can just see the sheer quality of the hardware and the steps and everything that you're getting down here. Um, you know, you, you, you really do have a sense of warmth and comfort and quality and customization. Uh, all of these are foam core, so they're very light. Here is your head, very, very nice. That famous uh, shower, which actually comes into its own in this size, but can uh, serve as a very nice uh, wet room to dry out your your Fowleys and things of that nature. Here is the master suite. I mean, look at the size of this bed. You're sacrificing nothing for being in a 44 foot. And you have full three side access, all sorts of ventilation above. There's Andrew, and I mean, he's a big guy. Um, he can sit up fully there. You're staring straight out the windows. I mean, absolutely wonderful. Lots of storage, but here's the kicker. So because you're in the forward uh, uh, thwart ship, and they put a door into the four peak, Sylvia's got full access to a walk-in closet. And you can still have a hatch above for access from the outside if for some reason you wanted to use it for uh, what it's meant to be, which is sales and stuff. <laughs> um, okay, finally, the Katana 582, the dark horse in the group that I bet nobody would ever think I'd put up here. You've got a full hydraulic dinghy lift. You've got a massive, beautiful, open uh, cockpit in the aft here, and there's the helm station. I know everybody's screaming, but you're exposed. Yeah, you can see the water, feel it. You can see your sails. You can. You have total control over the area, and if you need to, you can put a bimini up. Massive, massive forward trampoline, so you're going to need beanbag chairs, but look at the quality of the crosshatch uh, real teak, and there was what I like, a furling main boom, uh, and look at this interior. Oh my gosh, look at this interior. Two seating areas, not just any seating areas, but spectacular seating areas. There's a different configuration there. A beautiful U-shaped galley, full control over there. You even have a little lift on the side seating area. Uh, here's the one with uh, with without the side seating area and that entertainment area but look at the gloss on those veneers look down in this hull just how beautiful this one has the satin finish here is the gloss oh my gosh look at those veneers look at the space down the side you got that typical uh, katana two side access to your owner's suite and lots of ventilation in the ceiling in both side walls um, and a beautiful uh, um head. Uh, this is your passenger compartment. There's in your four peak. Here is your traditional lovely aft uh, Katana twin suite. Uh, there's another four peak shot with the uh, the high gloss. Let's do a quick speed tour of this of this beast and, and have a look. Bearing in mind this is a performance cat. A pure vinyl ester hull reinforced with carbon and uh, these beautiful outboard aft helm seats that Total connection with the water, total connection with your sails and the wind. I mean, oh my goodness. I think we'll take a little time with this one. I'm not going to speed up the video on you and get you seasick again. But uh, you got everything here, uh, and you can you can see and feel and hear everything. You got capacity for a, a big go fast uh, tender on that beautiful tender lift, which. I don't know why more uh, performance manufacturers don't do something like that with carbon and and uh, and netting to keep it light, but still offer that space and uh, the convenience of that sort of swim platform and dive platform. Uh, coming up here, uh, you you saw the the little teak rails there for grab on. You've got these beautiful teak uh, uh, gin and tonic seats up in the front. Um, and uh, just a, a massive amount of stowage space in uh, in the four peaks here. Beautiful lingerie on there with a touch of teak on it. Y you really don't have much deck space. You're you're, you're going to have to use beanbag chairs and different things on the trampolines. Um, this particular one doesn't have the in-boom furling. It it has uh, the canoe uh, boom. But look at how close that is. Uh, to the top. So your access there is so easy and so safe. You're, you're not bouncing around on the top of a, of a fly bridge uh, uh, bimini, like two stories in the air in heavy seas. 
Um, but, you know, really a, an attractive setup here. I would uh, switch out uh, these manual uh, furlers with electric furlers on the bow. And of course the in-furling, uh, in-boom furling uh, on the main and have it all controlled uh, from the cockpit. Um, you know, I hadn't seen this, this boat ever before and uh, I just think it's, uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. I'm, I'm not sure why uh, Katana has gone away from some of the features that we'll explore in here uh, so far, but look at the amount of stowage space that the hatch could do with being a bit bigger, but wow, do you have stowage in this vessel? And of course, you've got uh, your nice dagger boards there, so you're going to have good upwind performance. You've got nice opening hatches in the front of your windows there, uh, your, your forward windows, so you're going to have good ventilation. You've got great access to your boom. Uh, uh, anybody could, even my five foot nothing uh, Irish mother could have reached that, uh, that sail bag. So really tremendous there. Heading down the side decks, traditionally Katana, as always, no hatches in the side decks, so very clear and safe. Uh, there is no built-in barbecue on this uh, era of boat, but uh, obviously plenty of places to put them, and that seems like as good a place as any. Um, you know, you've got your line stowage from that big central electric winch there uh, on either side with those classic teak uh, grid work covers. I just, that, that harkens back to a pirate ship. I love it. Uh, and look at the piping on, on these. Uh, that, that is absolutely gorgeous. And the high gloss uh, cockpit table. The windows open up extensively. And again, remember you're stepping down into this uh, saloon. Uh, so you've got masses of storage under the sole of the cockpit. And um, you can see some of the hatches right there. You can imagine how much stowage you would have under those cockpit hatches. But, um, you know, looking at this galley, absolutely expansive, absolutely safe. Look at the, the quality of the veneers. Oh my gosh. Built-in dishwasher. If I'm not mistaken, that's a full-sized uh, residential dishwasher. Um, you know, you're, you're lacking nothing in here. You have neat little bar area there, uh, twin sinks. Um, I would replace the Corian and the sinks, but, uh, you know, uh, look at the size of your, um, your uh, chart table here, your your nav station. I mean, it's ginormous. Uh, I would reconfigure it and, and clean it up and get rid of the, the, the lines and stuff all over the place. But you also have a very nice built-in proper seat uh, that you can sit at there. Um, we're going to look at another version of this here now. Uh, so you can see a different upholstery color, sort of a, a little different... Um, a veneer uh, as well. Uh, you can see the entertainment centers here. Uh, they do have a, a much of a more purposeful space for the TV up there than say the uh, Privilege 585 has, but I, I would certainly search to find an even better spot than that. But look at the space and comfort. All those windows in the front open up uh, so that you can have full through salon uh, ventilation. Uh, there's, you know, a sense of it with a, a lovely more cream-colored uh, countertop, which I would go with, and you've got all the covers. Uh, so we're going to head back here into the um, the traditional twin berths in the aft section here. You can see as we go along to the starboard there was the angular access to the, the head, and look at how gorgeous your your guest room is here. Look at those veneers and, uh, you know, you got spa, obviously spots for TVs and entertainment uh, 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 systems and such in here. The curved top to these doorways, I just think, like, why doesn't Katana do stuff like this now? Or at least offer an elegance package that looks like this. Uh, can you imagine this in that 50 OC of theirs? It'd be fantastic. Um, here again, you've got a stowage in behind that uh, hatch in the shower there. Look at the hardware and the finish on these veneer doors and the cross hatch teak inlay in the shower. So uh, from here, uh, we're, we're going to have a, another look at uh, another version of these 
uh, aft uh, guest twins just so that you can see, you know, uh, the different veneers and the different finishes and the different colors. Look at the size of the window in the hull there. That is a huge opening window, absolutely ginormous. And you have one on the other side so you can get a cross breeze. But that window is gigantic. Gigantic. Um, and, and look at just look at the quality in these veneers. Uh, oh, Katana, please, could you offer a, a luxury package uh, that, that would outfit your uh, 50 OC in, in something of this magnitude? What a, what a dream that would be. Okay, we're going to head now up into the, uh, the front um, uh, four peak uh, guest berth. And uh, down we go, and of course to our, uh, our left there was the entrance to the bathroom, which we'll swing around and look at again. But here is a, a lovely um, forward double. Look at that beautiful window uh, out, out to the starboard there that you can stare straight out of when you're in bed, and that massive upper window. Uh, windows here, a little uh, um, makeup table. And then, of course, there was a, a mirrored bathroom there to the right as we just go up the stairs. And uh, you see the little wood, wood inlays in the ceilings and, and the, uh, the, the beauty of the leather and everything in here. Again, this is the one uh, where you've got just a single seating area as opposed to two. And we're going to head now back into the owner's suite, which takes up two-thirds of this hull. Uh, so there you are, beautiful uh, two axe side, easy access to this berth. It's not three. They probably could have done three by the looks of things, but they love to offset their their berths. Uh, that big window, big two big windows, um, beautiful uh, seating areas and makeup tables and stowage. And look here, double sinks, double sinks. A uh, beautiful big countertop and uh, enclosed shower area. Of course, all this would be updated. I, I, there's the crosshatch teak in the shower floor again. Uh, I changed the color of the countertop. But uh, you even have a wee window at the lower area there. So, I mean, wow. You, you have a lot in this vessel. A whole lot in this vessel. Uh, and and uh, th th there's just a massive amount to love in, in everything you're doing here. So um, we're going to look at this berth again in um, a different finish. There is your makeup table. Look at your sole. Uh, very attractive looking sole. Uh, and again, the, 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 the veneers in here are spectacular. Um, beautiful master suite here and berth, lots of easy access up the side. Um, you know, it's, it's everything you could really want. Uh, so there's your entertainment. Of course, you'd update that, but wow, look at those veneers. And uh, then we'll uh, have a quick peek, I think, inside uh, the head in this uh, finish. Uh, this one only had a single um, sink and uh, a separate uh, heads compartment, which I, I really like. Uh, and um, yeah, it's uh, th th there's there's a lot to love here when you when you look around this vessel. Uh, you got a lot more counter space in this one with the single sink as opposed uh, you know to, to house uh, Sylvia's pharmacy, but uh, all in all, very nice. Okay, so uh, I was not able to get any images of that uh, other four peak, so we'll just have to use our imaginations there. But wow, what a vessel. What an absolutely beautiful, beautiful vessel. Again, I just absolutely love those helm positions. Okay, the new Dave score. What is the final score for the, for, for the 19? We're in the top three. Which of these actually wins out in the Dave score? Which would be my top purchase within my million dollar budget uh, to sail around the world with Sylvia in luxury and comfort? Well, here it is. The Katana, believe it or not. We're talking about a boat that's almost 20 years old. It's still pure vinyl lester with a foam core, Kevlar reinforcement, carbon reinforcement. Uh, it had the, uh, the aft twin 
outboard helms that I wanted. Uh, it has dagger boards that I wanted. It has shaft drive that I wanted. Uh, you can, obviously, uh, it's probably an aftermarket thing, but I could pick up a used one with an in-boom furling. I could uh, replace the front uh, furlers with power furlers. Uh, the, the winches are easy to have. It's got two-sided um, master berth access. Uh, it has a, a massive saloon with two different seating areas, uh, a beautiful U-shaped galley. Uh, I mean, really, it is a, quite a remarkable vessel, and it's a fast vessel. Fast, safe, luxurious, and, and of course, those veneers. Holy mackerel, Katana, bring back the veneers. Interior living, going across them, the Katana gets a 9 out of 10. Uh, the others are obviously, they're smaller vessels, but newer vessels. And so they, although they, they, they are far more spacious than the size comparison would say, because the designs have changed so much. So for interior living, it's the Katana at 9 out of 10. Second, it's the Balance 442 at 7 out of 10. And third, it's the HH44. Now, I have seen different interior design palettes for the HH44, which leads me to believe that you can get a lot more warm veneers, uh, much more reminiscent of what they did in the 50. Uh, but I, I, the two vessels that I've seen videos of uh, um, have only been uh, the shower interior style, very ultra modern minimalist. Uh, exterior living. They're all about a six. None of them have anything spectacular outside. They're, they're all about the same. Light air's performance, they're all about the same. They're all, uh, sorry, yeah, they're all about the same. Their KSP is about the same. Uh, upwind performance, uh, the Katana and the Balance are going to be better because the HH is a, a mini keel. Helm position, I'm going to give uh, the HH the absolute nod because it has everything. It has, with, with the Versa Helm, you can lean it out outside just like I can on the Juno 60 and clearly see the side of the boat, be in touch with the water, see the telltales, everything is perfect. At the same time, I can swing it in and I can see through the front windows. I have twin helms. They're on a flat surface. It's, you know, short of not being up higher, it's, it's just about perfect. Uh, the Katana... Uh, gets an 8 out of 10 tied with the balance. Even though it has twin helms, they are fully exposed. And uh, uh, having said that, I, I love them. Uh, I, I'm sure I can find some kind of cover with them. But they're just not as perfect as the HH. Uh, the balance, fabulous alternative, although it's not twin helms. So I do like the twin helms. Having said that, I also like being up higher. Uh, so, and the way they've done that uh, secondary in lower helm is absolute genius. Quality, um, you know, look, these are the modern boats overall, I think, are going to be built better. Although, please, in the comments, argue with me on that one. I may be completely out to lunch, but my assumption is that the Balance and HH are just a little bit better quality than the, the 20 year old Katana. I could be wrong. Um, of the balance in the HH, um, you know, with the, the hull materials and stuff, I just give HH the, the nod. Although the balance is a bulletproof boat uh, built like a Mercedes. So there you have it. There are the top three. The one that I would sail away with if I could is the Katana 582. Uh, it just has so much. Now, it's, it's not much of a lead because I am scared of the sheer size of that vessel and you can comment whether I should be or not. Bearing in mind that I would have a dock mate and I would put brushless uh, motor um, bow thrusters on that thing no matter what anybody says. Um, the, the Balance 442 overall would, would definitely be my second pick. Um, uh, it's just the sense of that vessel, the space in that vessel. It's hard to say until you've been on board it. It is a fabulous vessel. But, you know, there's not, I, I certainly wouldn't turn up my nose at a beautiful uh, HH44. There's so much to love in that vessel at all. It's, we're talking tiny microns of preference difference here. Uh, so there you have it. 
Let's have a little discussion in the comments. Tell me what you think. Is this what you would take your missus on a circumnav in? Hope you enjoyed this series and we'll see you back here next week. Cheers.